Now let's see what we can do to make a tree an effective interconnection structure. A tree appears to have the advantage that the average distance doesn't grow as fast as it does in a mesh or a hypercube because it grows only logarithmically. But if we use a naive tree structure, we have two really serious problems. The first one is congestion because so many messages, if they're going from one half of the tree to the other, have to go over links near the top of the tree. Like these two are the worst. All of the messages from the left half to the right half have to traverse them. And consequently, its fault tolerance is low. If one of these links fails, the tree is partitioned into two. So it has a bisection bandwidth of only one. Well, we can do a slight modification of a tree to solve these problems. And this modification is called a fat tree in Studa Charles Leiserson of MIT and was implemented in the Thinking Machines CM5 data network, which is like 90, early 1990s. Um, the idea there is that the edges at the top levels of the tree should be duplicated, actually levels at all except the the um, the leaf level should be duplicated. So you know, like you have a your your connections at the leaf level, and then at the next level you have two copies of each connection, and then four copies of each connection at the next level. And if you had further levels to go up, the number of connections would double by two each time you go up one further level. So this means that you don't have that bottleneck at the root. And also it means that your, your uh, bisection bandwidth is proportional to the height of the tree. So that's, those are two very important properties. If we're going to route a message from processor I to processor J, we start from processor I and move up the tree along the path, taking it to the first common ancestor of I and J. There are many possible paths, so you can choose one at random, or you can choose it based on the congestion of the link, and that will help balance the load. Once you get to the first common ancestor, the message is then routed down along the unique path connecting it to processor J, because on the way down, you only have one way to go. You have many ways to go as you get closer to the top, but only one way from any of those places close to the top down to one of the leaf nodes. Now let's look at some metrics for a fat tree. Our diagram has shown a fat tree based on a binary tree, but it can also be based upon a Kary tree. In fact, the CM5 used fat trees based on quaternary trees. That is, they had four inputs and four outputs each. So you can see what the topology looks like there. It's also interesting to note that a fat tree can be viewed as a Benish network of the same arity that is folded back on itself in the high order dimension. And you can see that if you look at this diagram here. It looks isomorphic to the lower portion of this diagram over here, to the lower portion of the unidirectional Benish network. So if you're going to go on a Benish network, let's say from there over to there, what you do here is you go up there and then you reflect and start coming down the links toward the leaf node and then you get to the leaf node. So um, the collection of n over 2 switches at level i is viewed as 2 to the d minus i fat nodes of 2 to the i minus 1 switches where d is the dimension of the switch. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, d is the dimension of, of the switch. Okay. So uh, that's what we have for interconnection networks. And uh, next time, we'll talk a little bit more about how to route in an interconnection network.